Hey guys, so starting a new chapter. Uh, this one's about exponential and logarithmic functions. And so what an exponential is, is it takes the form f of x, or you can think of it as y, um, a, b to the x. And so a is a constant, and then b is um, also constant, and we're plugging in for x up here in the exponent. We're used to the exponent being the constant and the base changing. For these, the base is the constant and the exponent changes. So these grow very, very fast. Um, this first thing is just kind of remembering function notation and kind of getting used to plugging into exponentials. So f of zero, that means we're letting x equals zero in the f function. And if you recall, three to the zero, anything to the zero is one um, other than zero. Uh, b, g of one. Okay, so here's our g function. So it's gonna be one half uh, to the first, and anything to the first is just itself. Um, f of two, the negative, sorry, f evaluated at negative two. So that's gonna be three to the negative two. And remember with our negative exponents, that means we do one over three squared, which would be one ninth. And this one, a little bit of a operation, so we're gonna find f of two, subtract g of negative two. So f of two is gonna be three squared. G of negative two is gonna be one half to the negative two. Um, there's a property of exponents that no one ever remembers, um, but let me remind you right here. A over B to the negative X is the same thing as B over A to the positive X. Um, so that means I can simplify this really easily. Uh, three squared, I'm just gonna write as nine down here. This is the same as two over one squared and 2 over 1 is just 2 and 2 squared will make 4 so then it's 9 minus 4 because we're subtracting those two values and that makes 5 and then this would be the match that I'd have you guys try um, so f of 3 so that would be 2 cubed equals 8 g of 0 so we already know the answer is 1 right because anything to the 0 is 1 Uh, g to the negative 2, so that would be, I'm sorry, 1 fourth to the negative 2. So we can do the 4 over 1 squared, and that makes 16. And then f of 3 minus g of negative 1. So f of 3 would be 2 to the third, g of the negative first would be 1 fourth to the negative 1. So 2 to the third would be 8. And one fourth, I can flip that over and it's positive one. So it's just four and eight minus four makes four. Okay, and then in this next part, we are graphing exponentials. And so graphing an exponential is not too bad. So make a little table. And the numbers we always want to use are going to be negative one, zero, and one. And so just this time, I'm going to do negative 2 and 2 and show you why those are the numbers that you actually want to use. So if I do negative 2 up here, I get 4 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 4 squared or 1 16th. So we're graphing on this little graph over here. 1 16th of this box is way bigger than this pattern. Um, and so that's not really meaningful. In terms of kind of what we can draw, that's basically 0. Um, so then we go 4 to the negative 1, and that would be 1 over 4, so 1 fourth. That I can get somewhere kind of close to where it should be. Uh, 4 to the 0 would be 1, and sorry, I got some, something there. 4 to the 1 would be 4, and then 4 squared. Okay, so now we're at 16, which I think these are 7, so that would be, you know, somewhere up here out of where you can see. Um, so too small, too big, and so those middle three are gonna be really the ones that are gonna let us see what's going on on a reasonable size graph. So when x is negative one, y is one fourth. When x is zero, y is one, and when x is one, y is four. And so what we get, and this would have been one sixteenth, right? So, and then the next one would have been um, one over four cubed, so one sixty-fourth. You can see it's getting closer and closer to zero, but it's never gonna get there. So we don't wanna draw a graph down here. This is what's called a horizontal asymptote. And so we're gonna approach that, um, but never, never actually really touch it. 
uh, just gets closer and closer to zero. And then this side, our next point would be way up here at 16 out of range of the, the camera. Um, so we kind of get this curve that like tails into the, the x-axis and then grows really, really fast. So that's generally what these look like or some variation of that. Um, and so here we're going to see a variation. So x, y. So all I want to do is pick negative 1, 0, 1. And then 1 third to the negative 1 is 3 over 1 to the 1. So that's 3. Uh, anything to the 0 is 1. And 1 third to the 1, that's going to be 1 third. So when x is negative 1, y is 3. When x is 0, y is 1. And when x is 1, y is 1 third. Um, so it has that behavior right here where it's trailing in towards the x-axis and it has the side that's growing really fast. It's basically like this one, but it got, it basically got flipped around the y-axis. One other thing on this one that I just thought of, um, 1 over 3 to the x is the same thing as if I had a negative exponent here with the 3 up top, 3 to the negative x. Because this would be 1 over 3 to the x, right? Because this would take this down to the denominator. And since the numerator is a 1, I could use parentheses. So these mean the same thing. So we're going to see this same behavior um, when it's written in a little bit different form. But again, this I could think of as this, which would be the same thing as that. So the fractional base and a negative exponent, same deal. Just two forms. And look, it's a negative exponent. So this is um, x, y, negative 1, 0, 1. So if I put in 5 to the negative of negative 1, that's 5 to the first. So this one is just 5. Anything to the 0 is 1. And then this would be 5 to the negative because the sign is there, 1, which is the 1 fifth. And so that would be here, here, and about there. So that same behavior as the last graph. This one's trailing in on the right and climbing on the left. Um, and this, this could be written, if I have this, it's the same thing as having that. And so we can see that same behavior in both of those graphs. Uh, this next round is what I would have you guys try. So y equals 3 to the x is this one. So this would be uh, negative 1, 0, 1 every time. And 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. And so we get kind of that classic exponential. Okay, so this time we have a negative in front and our same negative one, zero, one. So we'll go, if this is a negative one, sorry, uh, negative four to the negative one, that would be, so this negative out front is just like, um, it's gonna be a negative number. So you can sort of ignore it for a second and just think about what four to the negative one would look like. So that would be one over four and then it's negative, so negative one-fourth. Here, negative four to the zero, anything to the zero is one, so this is one, but negative. And then negative four to the one, so that's four and negative. Okay, so, and this, this negative right here is like having a negative one times four to the x, that's kind of a nice way of thinking of it. That's why I was just sort of covering up and saying, okay, it's like this, do the exponent first, and then it's actually a multiply second. Um, so here we got negative one, negative one fourth, zero, negative one, and one four. So it's that same graph, remember they were doing this, and this one, so it's like it's been folded across the x-axis, and that's going to be um, called a reflected across to x. So this one, we got one-fifth to a negative x. So we'll do a table, negative one, zero, one. And <clears throat> um, one-fifth to the negative one is the same thing. It's five over one to the one. 
so that's five. Um, anything that's a zero is one. And then um, this would be one fifth to the, oh, you know what? I missed a sign up here. Sorry, let me do this one over right here. So this should be one fifth to the negative of negative one. And so that's gonna be one fifth to the one or one fifth. Um, and then this one will be one fifth and the negative one, so that one's gonna be five. Okay, so negative one, one fifth, and zero, one, and then one, five. We get that graph right there. And so with this, um, with this one fifth to the negative x, if I flip that over, it makes it five to the x. So it's just doing kind of the regular graph thing. Okay, so these problems are really different from the last set. We're gonna use this definition we have here from the first page, y equals a, b to the x. And we have this table of data, and so we have a couple of data points. We can use that to find a and b, and then that will give us an equation, and we can plug in to get these values. So um, if I have y equals a, b to the x, then 40 is the y, a and b are the things I don't know, and zero is the x. So I also, I have years in value. I don't know why I have that. I think it was off of a story problem from an old one. Uh, I should just think of it as x and y. Um, so zero's in for my x. B to the zero is gonna be one. So what that means is we already know a. A is 40, so that's cool. And then what we can do is we can go um, with the second point, two and uh, the 3.6. So 3.6 is y, and that equals a. We know a now, it's 40. And then b squared, and that's gonna let us get b. So I'll divide both sides by 40. And I'm just gonna leave it like that, because it's about to go into a calculator. And so then I have b squared, so that means I need to root both sides. And the base of an exponential cannot be a negative number, it has to be uh, greater than zero and not one. So b must be greater than zero and not one. Um, and so I don't have to do the plus minus. And so then this would just be plain b. And if you put all that in the calculator, it should come out to 0.3. So then that means our equation is y equals 40, 0.3 to the x. And now that I have that, I can just put one in and that'll be 40 times 0.3. And that came out to, um, let's see, 12. And if you put three in, I got 1.08. And for four, I got 0.324. And so I'm just plugging, you know, those numbers in for this x in the calculator. Okay, so this is the match problem I would have you guys try in class. And we'll make this x, we'll make this y again. And so we're plugging in here, and remember from last time, anytime this is zero, that's going to be a. So we already know a is 12. And then here we'll just go, uh, y is 69.12 equals a is the 12, is the zero, and then b squared. And so I'll divide over that 12. And if you do that, it comes out to 5.76 equals b squared. And then I just root both sides. And then that comes out to 2.4 equals b. So then my equation is going to be y equals a was 12 times 2.4. I think I should write it that way. It'll look better. Uh, to the x. And then uh, plugging in 1, 3, and 4 in for x here, I got... 28.8, uh, 165.89, and 398.13. Okay, so uh, number 11, we are solving. And so the first thing we want to do, uh, this is kind of like those last problems, how we solve that. 
I want to get this 500 out of there so I can isolate the power. And so that would be um, 2.4 equals, those cancel, a to the sixth. And the way that we undo the a to the sixth is we can take the sixth root of both sides. And to put that in your calculator, um, you're looking for a, it might look like this. Um, that's usually the way that, that button looks. It's usually the second function of the root button. Um, and then the other way is to do, um, you can also just type parentheses, parentheses one divided by six in the exponent if you can't find that button. Um, so like this would be um, a six here with 2.4 or 2.4 to the one sixth. And so if you successfully get that in the calculator, you should get A equals 1.16. Uh, for this one, uh, we're going to divide that 45.3 over. And then we get this kind of ugly 35.6. 45.3 equals 1 minus r to the 7th. And then I will take the 7th root of both sides of that. And if you get that in the calculator successfully, it should come out 0 0.9661, and that goes on, equals 1 minus r, because now the 7th root undid the power. And then let's, um, I'm going to bring the R over to this side, and I'm going to subtract this over to that side, just because I feel like it's more natural in that order. Um, and then we get R equals to two decimal places, uh, 0 0.03. Okay, and this is the uh, match question. So f divide out the 500. And we get 0.6 equals, that cancels, a to the fourth. And then I'll just take the fourth root of both sides. And to two decimal places, a equals 0 0.88. Uh, over here on this one, I want to divide out that 10 first. So that's going to be 3.6 and then 1 plus r to the 7th. And then uh, since to the 7th, we'll take the 7th root. And that's going to give us 1.20 equals 1 plus r. And then we'll just take the 1 over. So 0 0.20 equals R.